the origins of underwater exploration can be traced back 5,000 years. But scuba, as we know it, started in the 1940s when Jacques Cousteau and his comrades invented the aqualung during World War II. After the war, the art and science of diving progressed rapidly as the U.S. Navy worked on improving existing equipment and developing new training methods. In the 1950s, scuba equipment was finally available to the public. Diving became a sport. The first scuba divers were free divers, surfers, competitive swimmers. The only organization was dive clubs, who had formed into the Underwater Society of America. But as interest grew in the sport, there was a need developing for a more structured approach to scuba training. The first scuba training was crewed and available only on a local basis. Programs such as Connie Lindbergh's scientific scuba course at Scripps Institute in 1952 were the forerunners. The first organized program was developed in Los Angeles County in 1954 by Bev Morgan and Al Tillman. Their program was excellent, but it existed only within Los Angeles County. The need for a national program was apparent. Within a few years, the Council for National Cooperation in Aquatics put together the foundation for the YMCA program, and in 1959, they became the first national training agency. Over time, Al Tillman proved to be one of diving's foremost educators. He had always dreamed of taking his L.A. County program to the national level when he was contacted by Neil Hess of Skin Diver Magazine in 1960. Neil Hess worked for Skin Diver Magazine, writing a column called The Instructor's Corner. Instructors nationwide would send in course outlines for approval. Hess envisioned developing a true national program, which he called the National Diving Patrol. By 1960, the patrol was ready to hold their first national instructor course in Houston, which was based on the L.A. County curriculum. However, since the National Diving Patrol already belonged to a group in Boston, they were forced to come up with a new name, and they chose the National Association of Underwater Instructors, or NAWI. By the early 60s, equipment was beginning to change and evolve, and along with new equipment came new ideas about instruction that eventually led John Gaffney to start NASDS. John had been working for Skin Diver magazine since 1955, and in 1962, he proposed a concept where NAWI would be the training arm of an association of professional diving equipment stores and Skin Diver would act as their voice. Both organizations rejected the idea, so John started the National Association of Skin Diving Schools. NASDS would temporarily go out of business in 1964 until it reorganized in 1967. By the 1960s, Scuba diving was rapidly becoming popular with the help of movies and characters such as James Bond in Thunderball and Mike Nelson in Sea Hunt. This popularity attracted a new breed of people that were adventurous but lacked exceptional water skills. The need for better scuba training was apparent and new training agencies were beginning to enter the market. Paddy was started in 1967 in Chicago by two men, John Cronin and Ralph Erickson. John worked for U.S. divers, and Ralph was a school teacher. Like many big companies, Patty, too, had humble beginnings. They started out by crossing over instructors from other agencies. This mass crossing over allowed them to build the resources they needed to develop their own training programs. Patty moved to California in 1970 and has gone on to become the world's largest diving association. When NASDS reorganized in 1967, it brought together a group of talented people that were committed to changing the face of scuba training and retailing. Bob Clark operated a dive business in Nebraska, while Ed Brawley operated out of Northern California. These two men, along with Bill Hardy from San Diego Divers Supply, taught the first NASDS instructor school, which was held in Denver, Colorado in 1968. This school was not unique, but the relationship that these two men developed was. While John Gaffney focused on developing NASDS sales programs for the retailers, Bob Clark and Ed Brawley began devising precise instructional techniques for open water classes. Using these techniques, 
NASDS introduced the two dive basic courts and became the first agency to require open water training. Discovering the need for more training, the four dive senior course would emerge that same year. In 1969, Bob and Ed's instructional methods were written down in what became known as the NASDS Blue Book. With the help of Gene Greger, Ed Brawley went on in 1970 to develop a detailed word-for-word -word instructor presentation for his instructor college. This book was adopted by NASDS and became known as the Red Book. However, shortly afterwards, an upheaval within NASDS led to the founding of a new agency, SSI. In 1970, the breakup of NASDS led Bob Clark, Ed Brawley, and a group of retailers to start a new store member association, which they called Scuba Schools International. Within a few years, Ed Brawley would strike out on his own, leaving Bob to assume sole ownership of SSI. In 1974, Bob decided to move SSI from Dive Magazine's California office to Colorado. While SSI and NASDS were not much different at first, over the years they evolved to take on the strengths of their owners. Gaffney's strengths were in sales and retailing, which continued to be the main focus of NASDS. Clark's strengths turned out to be developing educational programs, so high-quality training became the main focus of SSI. It all started in 1973 when Clark was contacted by the Jefferson Company to author a scuba instructional program. These materials were to be generic, so they could be used by any diving agency. Bob was assigned a staff writer, and the two of them ended up writing the Jefferson Open Water Sport Diver Manual, a workbook, and audiovisual programs. These components formed the first systemized teaching system in scuba diving, and were to become the future of SSI. Now, Armed with a teaching system for the academics, Bob went to work on an instructor manual which outlined the water skills and teaching techniques he had been developing through the years. SSI now became a very important part of the certification business, and a large measure of that is owed to the Jefferson Company. Not willing to stop there, Bob took a history-making step, and in 1975, SSI began requiring six open water dives for entry-level certification. Bob felt that people simply were not comfortable after only two or three dives. It would take until 1986 when the industry implemented the ANSI industry standards for all of the associations to agree to require a minimum of four open water dives. SSI actually needed to lower their required standard in order to comply with the new industry standard. <laughs> Although a variety of other associations have entered the market over the years, in recent years, PADI, SSI, and NAWI have controlled the majority of the market in the United States. There are, however, two international agencies that have played a major role in Europe and the Mediterranean. They are the BSAC and CMAS. The British Subaqua Club was formed in 1953 to promote underwater exploration, science, and safety in these activities. The BSAC is not an instructor organization, but is a club of 55,000 members and over 1,600 active branches, both in the United Kingdom and parts of the world. Confédération Mondiale des Activités Subaquatiques, or CMAS, was founded in 1958 in Monaco, and Commander Jacques Cousteau was the first president until 1973 when he retired. While CMAS is not a certifying agency, Federation members are permitted to issue C cards bearing the CMAS quality label. Throughout the 1980s and 90s, U.S. certifying agencies such as SSI began to take hold in the international market. SSI opened its first regional center in Southeast Asia in 1983 and has since expanded into Australia and the South Pacific, Asia, Europe, Latin America, Africa, and the Middle East. Our international growth continues to spread the recognition of SSIC cards and training around the world. Now you have a picture of how SSI fits into the scuba certification industry. Let's look more closely at the business and training philosophies of SSI and how they were developed. 
Under the sole ownership of Bob Clark, SSI began to take on the business philosophy Bob had used in the conduct of his retail stores. Bob truly believes the best way to develop divers is through professional retailers. Only professional scuba schools could offer the training, equipment, service, and professionalism divers need to be successful. Bob believes that divers can never achieve their ultimate goal of success unless they receive quality training, own their own equipment, and gain additional diving experience. This philosophy is why SSI is a dealer organization. While SSI obviously supports the dealer, we also look out for the best interests of the instructor. By affiliating with professional scuba retailers, instructors receive the mentoring, support, and facilities that they need to develop into high-quality, productive instructors. So the dealer network is really as beneficial to the instructor as it is to the dealer. While the SSI instructor relationship is the major difference between SSI and training agencies with independent instructors, the only real difference between the systems is where instructors buy their products. SSI instructors must purchase all C cards and training materials through their dealer. The major advantage of the SSI system is that it provides for high quality diver training due to the built-in system of checks and balances. Dealers monitor their instructors and order the C cards. This helps make sure that no one gets certified who isn't qualified. It is in the dealer's best interest to provide quality training or they won't stay in business. At SSI, we also pride ourselves on our teaching philosophy. We feel unique in that our philosophy is based not only on sound learning theory, but also on real life applications to the scuba diving environment. Our philosophy is different from other agencies and thus is what sets us apart. When Bob Clark took over SSI, he began to look at the skills taught to divers. And it became clear that there had to be real justifications for what you asked a student to do. Bob also tracked scuba accidents and looked at how they could have been prevented through better training. From this research, he developed two simple criteria that had to be applied to all skills done in the training process. Bob asked the questions, one, was the exercise a function of a real diving situation or experience? Two, would the skill work under the worst possible conditions and with any equipment configuration? For example, these two criteria are why SSI teaches passing of the primary regulator during air sharing. Through experience, Bob learned that a student is more likely to grab the working regulator, which is the one in his buddy's mouth. Plus, passing the primary will work with any equipment configuration. So why not teach people the best skill for an emergency situation? Next, Bob began researching learning theories and why people learn. He simplified this research into two main points. One, to promote learning, there must be a clear need to know on the part of the student. Two, good habits and conditioned responses can only be taught through repetition. Over the years, Bob combined all of his research, experience, and theories to create the five main points of the SSI teaching philosophy. These five points include, one, all SSI skills are real-world skills. Two, SSI training provides a clear need to know. Three, SSI teaching is based on comfort through repetition to build skill level and habit. Four, SSI training develops diver independence. And five, last and most importantly, that learning must be fun. Scuba diving has evolved from the bare essential equipment and training of the 1950s to the sophisticated total diving systems and high-tech training techniques in use today. And as history tends to repeat itself, in 1999, SSI rejoined forces with its original roots by merging with NASDS. The merging of these two companies created the only true dealer support organization in the diving industry. And by combining the solid training programs from SSI with the merchandising and business support programs of NASDS, we created an agency that is ready to lead the industry into the 21st century. SSI is out to change the industry 
by creating a spirit of cooperation between training agencies. We helped develop the Universal Referral Program to make the training process easier for students. And we are continuously working on other programs that benefit the entire industry. You can take pride in being a part of SSI's rich history. And we hope you're ready to help write the next chapter. What is next? Who knows? But we can tell you this. The next century should be the most important period in diving history. And SSI will be a big part of it.